Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm going to be starting a new series called Did You Know? It's going to be about, um, did you know about these um, esoteric little known facts in the early Christian church? Um, so I have quite a few video ideas for this just from reading uh, the church fathers myself and some of the other apocryphal stuff that you wouldn't um, put under the church fathers, but just other early Christian writings. So there's a lot here. Um, today's the first episode. Um, this might be the prologue. It's not really that um, huge of a fact, but um, I don't think anybody else knows it. I'm one of the only people that know this. So the fact is that um, St. Mark the Evangelist has short fingers. Um, yeah, it doesn't get more interesting than that. But um, these, so the source we are using. Um, is an old Latin prologue to the book of Mark. So this was um, attached to the papyrus scroll, I believe, uh, for the book of Mark. Um, and it comes from the second century. So it was uh, a part of the anti-Marcionite prologues, um, which arose in the late second century, mid third century. Um, these are called the Lat old Latin prologues, um, if you're interested in researching these further. Um, these precede each of the Gospels and some copies of the Latin Vulgate. I'm sure some of um, you out there have heard of the Vulgate before. It's a very popular biblical translation written by St. Jerome. So let's, uh, let's look at the source. <clears throat> it reads, Mark, who is called... Stub finger because he had shorter fingers with regard to the other dimensions of the body. He had been the disciple and recorder of Peter, whom he followed, just as he heard him relating. So um, we'll take a look at the other sources here. They say that Mark, St. Mark, wrote the Gospel of Mark after he hearing Peter. So it's really the book of Mark is really the Gospel of Peter. Peter was just telling Mark what to write down and mark was hearing these stories because he was um he was in rome at the same time peter was teaching in rome the same time peter was in charge of the roman church um but yeah we'll continue so having been asked by the brethren in rome he wrote this short gospel in the regions of italy when peter heard about it he approved and authorized it to be read to the church with his own authority but after the demise of peter um so his death Taking this gospel that he had composed, he journeyed to Egypt, and being ordained the first bishop of Alexandria, he founded the church there, preaching Christ. He was a man of such great learning and austerity of life that he induced all the followers of Christ to imitate his example. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. That gives you another uh, glimpse at St. Mark, who was this man. Um, but yeah, going back to the fun fact, I suppose, it's his nickname was Stubfinger um, because he had shorter fingers with regard to the other dimensions of the body. So that's uh, pretty cool there. And just briefly, we'll look at the other sources. And I'll put this document in the description for those who um, want to see some more of these. But they just kind of talk about um, the writers of the gospel. I haven't read the full document, so I honestly don't know what it's about. But yeah, so origin. Um it says he carried for the tradition of Peter being alive in his writing about the four Gospels. Um, so, yeah, he says, among the four Gospels, which are the only indisputable ones in the Church of God under heaven, I have learned by tradition that the first was written by Matthew, who is once a publican, but afterwards an apostle of Jesus Christ, and it was prepared for the converts from Judaism and published in the Hebrew language. The second is by Mark, who composed it according to the instructions of Peter, who in his Catholic epistle acknowledges him as a son, saying, The church that is at Babylon elected together with you, saluteth you, and so does Marcus, my son. So I kind of uh, smirk there because um, you'll see a lot of Protestants, there'll be a, a Protestants will say, Peter was never in Rome. Peter never went to Rome. Um, but yeah, just right there, he, he talks about the... Um, how Peter is referring to uh, Mark in this verse, and that's, I uh, forget the exact verse, maybe 
Second Peter three or First Peter three, one of the two. It's something like that. You, I'm sure you can find it if you just type in the church that is at Babylon. So Babylon, of course, was a code word for Rome, um, and Protestants will agree that that it's a code word in the Book of Revelation. And um, but they they take offense to that verse. Um, they try to prove that Peter never went to Rome because they're trying to go against the Catholic Church. Um, but we'll continue that train of thought in the next video how peter as related by many early christians not only was in rome but died uh, in rome with saint paul so there's an interesting fact about the two of them an interesting encounter and we'll uh, discuss that in the next video so stay tuned everyone bye bye